Jeez. All right, welcome back to another series from WCS Valencia. It's Zerg versus Zerg. And two players that if you want StarCraft at all, you should most definitely recognize. In the bottom right, from Canada, training recently in Korea, the Queen of Blades. It's Scarlet. And in the top left, the Finnish Titan, the finisher, the favorite in almost every series he's in, and for good reason, it's Sarah. Now, Zerg versus Zerg, on top of this being Sarah versus Scarlet, that's, that's hype in general and all of that. And I wasn't able to watch this series live, believe it or not, it's not happening right in front of me right now, but Zerg versus Zerg is a matchup that, uh, if you don't really delve into the details, can, can kind of seem a little bit coin flippy. Like, like oh, I guess they just got a good main hit. I get, uh, they're going to win the game now. It's really a lot more details than that. And the devil is in the details, especially for these players of this caliber. One drone makes all the difference. A bit of misinformation, a couple zerglings slipping by. That can make all the difference. It's, these are some of the best, well, some of, what am I saying? The best foreign Zergs. Now, Scarlet is on that tier with Rainer and Nurchio and the Laser. Um, Cyril is the best. Oh, okay. Outside of Korea, maybe inside of Korea, we might get a chance soon with GSL versus the world. Um, but not only the best non Korean Zerg, but right now, definitely the best non Korean player. We just got a hatch gas pull to open things up. Overlord, pathings, and placement are something that are very mapped out. Overlord's not a very flexible unit early on. They don't move very quick. So you, you really have to know exactly how much time is it going to take. Now both players should see the creep and, and have an idea of what's coming out. They can come in for a few extra seconds, get a beat on the drone count, how much larva is building, see lings popping out, and then immediately back off before the queen's complete and start to drive them out with their spines. We have two drones pulled off a of gas. And in seeing the hatch timing, uh, each player seeing the hatch timing, oh, interesting, taking the inside base. I don't know if this is to maybe evade scouting or if this is just what Cyril intended all along. Scarlet, on the other hand, a split, a dichotomy of builds here. Continuing to mine gas, Cyril has moved his overlords into position. He knows he has perfect vision of where... Look, look at how perfect. Oh, my God. You can't slip a Zergling by that. That's... But still giving him vision of the third bases. And this... Well, will Cyril be able to figure it out? Oh, Scarlet. Going to block off this area. Well, that creep tumor is kind of in an awkward spot. Cyril not going to commit the Roach Warren and the Evolution Chamber. Plus one ranged attack on the way. It looks like this will be a Roach timing. We know that. Cyril doesn't know that for sure. There could be a gas in the main. The lair could be already done and a Spire could potentially... Well, not, not quite at this time, but almost on the way. All right. The, the real tell will be the commitment to Roach Speed. Roach Speed, whenever a Zerg building is freaking out, that means it's upgrading or doing something. Whether it's building a queen, upgrading plus one ranged attack, getting roach speed. Cyril's going to have a beat on that. Uh, he didn't quite see this gas, but at this point, he should realize, okay, this is what's happening. And how am I going to defend? Because he already invested in another base. He just started his roach one. Plus one ranged attack is on the way, and plus one ranged attack is the choice. Be because with roaches, it takes less hits from a roach versus a roach to kill another roach than the amount negated by plus one carapace. So plus one carapace doesn't negate as many roach hits as plus one attack takes off the amount to kill a roach. The time to kill, if you will. And also it's a significant upgrade against zerglings. It allows you to kill zerglings in only two roach hits instead of three. Also, just in general, uh, for ranged units, usually you prefer attack upgrades because you're looking for an angle where all your units can be attacking but not necessarily taking damage as opposed to things like Zerglings which by their very nature get up in your grill. 
But this is going to come down to the defender's advantage. Scarlet actually, for a time, has a better economy. She had a better economy. Now, Serral's probably has, well, he has 50 drones. He's going to have the later lair, and, and without the roach speed, no aggressive potential. But as long as he has just enough roaches and that plus one upgrade, the plus one upgrade is the real deal, he should have enough to defend. It depends on the angle Scarlet hits from, how decisive she is. Some Zerglings sneaking by. Seeing the third. This is all incredibly... Just these two Zerglings getting all this information. See some drones on the way. The Roaches are hitting, but this isn't a full-on, all-out commitment. There is going to be a follow-up here. So, Cyril, he's sneaking out more drones just off that tiny tidbit of information. All he needs to do, he has Overlord spread out. Let's look at Cyril's vision right now. He can see, with time to spare and having creep, where the Roaches could be coming from. There's really not the resources here for Ravagers quite yet. They start now for Ravagers, what it takes to gun down an Overlord. Start to remove that vision. Scarlet's starting to realize, all right, there's, there's going to be enough roaches to defend. Attack into a concave closer to your opponent's line of production. And we already see the corrosive bile dodges out. I won't be surprised to see eventually uh, Overlord speed, which makes it pretty much impossible to kill an Ovi with those corrosive biles. The queen a little bit better. That one's going to be knocked down. But there are more Overseers, and snuck the Changeling into the main out of Scarlet's vision. Now, Cyril going for a fourth base early on. He's still kind of plying that defense. He knows he's not going to have any map control. His only advantage is vision and having the third base in a better economy. I know that sounds like a lot, but it, Scarlet, with, with that tech advantage, with that extra edge, can come in and just cut Cyril in two. Even the Queen's coming up here for a little bit of extra support, and one or two transfuses can make the difference. Corrosive Bile can split up the Roach forces. You have to be very careful not to try to pull back too early, because you lose too much DPS on your Roaches. The unit count right now, 20, well, 32 to 33 Roaches. The Ravager count nearly even. The Overseer's getting a beat on this. Just a few more Roaches from Cyril on the left side, driving back Scarlets. Carapace, level one coming up. And plus two attack. This is going to be a significant upgrade advantage for Scarlet. But Cyril going to jump on it. Even without the upgrades, well, well plus two attack is not done yet. Scarlet's going to try to move in the front, but there is a spine and a couple queens on the side. Corrosive bow, volley goes out. Cyril getting driven back on the left and on the right. The transfuse is going to try to stay on the ground. Corrosive bow going to be mostly dodged out, but some connect. The fight on the left is being won by Cyril as well. He could flank around the back here. Scarlet may be overextending. She tried to work with the upgrade advantage, but Cyril pounced a little bit too early, and the numbers weren't there. Cyril going to continue his efforts. The numbers are a lot closer now once we get on the Scarlet's half of the map. A lurker done behind. Cyril has had about 10 more drones this entire time. That means Scarlet, she, she still has to work. 54 drones is never like, okay, we're just going to sit back and play defense. No, if you're under 60 drones in ZVZ, especially in a Roach versus Roach scenario, your only option is to continue making those roaches. Any other option is inherently risky because you can't build roaches and build a spire or build a lurker den or, or get all those things while you're getting upgrades and getting roaches already. So Cyril going to scout the fourth base. He's already had an overlord there the entire time. Scarlet didn't pick it off. So he's known he's dealing with, well, actually, I believe, I'm not sure if this was canceled, this fourth base, to be honest. Um, when, when Cyril saw the Scarlet's timing coming in, or uh, if, if it was taken out, but I don't believe Scarlet had the forces to spare, so it's very likely that Cyril said, nope, I need a few hundred more minerals in order to defend, cancels it, knows he already has the income advantage, and he has the defensive position, so being able to get that lurker down a little bit earlier is going to help out a lot. Now this is a hilarious duel, as Overlord speed is complete. Now, Lurkers are not a hard counter to Roach Ravager. You, you find a competent enough player like Scarlet. The Corrosive Biles can target down the Lurkers. It, it takes four hits for the Corrosive Bile to bring it all the way down. Uh, it does 60 damage a hit, and the Lurker has 200 HP. I'm right on that, right? Like, like it is 200. Uh, we're going to find out in a second. We'll see if I'm accurate. But they can be outmaneuvered, especially if they don't have that Hive Tech Adaptive Talons upgrade. 
Scarlet at 200 supply. And honestly, having too many drones... Well, Scarlet now at 64 drones, Serral at 60. ZVZ definitely the lowest economy matchup when it comes to sheer drone count. Yeah, they do have 200. See, I, I know something about this game. But another group of Scarlet Troaches being taken out, and on the right as well. The main thrust coming through the center. The Lurkers are already in place. Where is the Overseer? The Lurkers doing massive damage through the center line of Scarlet's Roaches. But the Burrow move, I'm not sure Sarah was paying attention on the right side, or he just doesn't care. As Burrow move is done, you can outmaneuver wherever the Lurkers are. You can continue to regenerate your roaches. You can win the War of Attrition, but Cyril's coming in and do a lot of damage now. The first attack on the fourth base. Scarlet gonna be able to, well, maybe take it out. It doesn't look like it quite yet. Does she have the numbers back at home? The hatchery being targeted. Can we get another corrosive bile on there? It looks like it's going to be finished off. Scarlet trying to regroup. Another group of units in the center. The Lurker's holding a, an uncomfortable position, to say the very least. A few more Burrowed Roaches moving through, but there's a Spore Crawler in place. Serral is deflecting almost everything at home while doing damage at the front. The Lurkers, the backbone of the attack, throwing their spine straight through the center while the Roach flanks picking apart Scarlet's economy. Ten Roaches, eight Roaches in the main aren't going to do anything if you have nothing to back it up. Scarlet needs to win a decisive fight, but how? The numbers really aren't there. Serral has more, just, just a couple Lurkers buying some time here. Both hatcheries are down. This has very quickly turned from nearly an even game to Serral essentially just destroying Scarlet on both sides. It, it looked it looked close, but, but Serral just kind of picked it apart. And the backup isn't there. Yeah, some corrosive vials, but the damage is already done. Serral still has 50 workers. 173 to 96 supply. Ravagers. A lurker den. There is no follow up here for Scarlet. No fancy footwork is going to come back from a. Well, she took out the right side base, but the standing army is already enough. This is, this is one of those games you can fight, but against someone like Serral, I think even Scarlet knows right now this game is. Uh, well, we're going to game two, and she's not going to be in, in the lead. I mean, for a move roaches, maybe, but the thing is, Serral has the same units with a better economy and a good de defensive position. He honestly doesn't even need to attack. He can, but he doesn't need to. Maxed out, banking money, lurker tech already done. If you really want to solidify, you get an infestation pit, you work up to hive, but you don't need. Yeah, there. Wait, I take it back. He already has an infestation pit, and there goes the hive. The Roaches on the right blocked off. Overlord's in position. Serral, look at his vision right now. How disgusting. The Roaches trying to get by. That's going to do nothing. A pretty dramatic game one. It, it, Serral just picked all the right... Within 30 seconds, picking all the right fights. Really using those Lurkers as soon as they finish. In, that, in a mirror matchup, that's really the key. It is because both of you can build the same things. That's how a mirror matchup works. It gives you a dramatic advantage when your tech kicks in. Whether it's an upgrade, whether it's lurkers or a spire, you have a small window where, especially if you've been able to hide it from your opponent, which Cyril did, to really lean on those units. The, the lurkers, as Scarlet was readying for a huge attack, no, not enough detection. A few lurkers shut it down, and then suddenly Serral has the initiative. He can attack across the map, and Scarlet doesn't have a response. The same you'll see in, in in TVT when a player gets air control and suddenly liberators are out. In PvP, if there are units like overwhelming archons or even disruptors or things like that, it's like, well, hello. I didn't know you had those out yet. I don't know. Well, there's really not quite a response. Now, I've been saying the game is over. But Scarlet is at 156 supply. There's a... I mean, there's a dream. But right now, there are Vipers on the way. What did I do to the production tab? I'll figure this out then. I put the production tab on the bottom right, which is pretty fancy, but Vipers on the way. Cyril going for a fifth base. Even if the supplies start to even up, the tech, uh, just the bank in general... 
it is not really there, Scarlet. There, there's always the chance he runs up the ramp in the lurkers. Okay, everybody has done that before. I'm sure even Cyril has. And that's why we see the Vipers and the Adaptive Talons and the plus three. Like, instead of just trying to really go headlong in the lurkers, why risk it? You can pull them out of the ground. You can blind them under it. Cyril banking up enough money for another round of units. Not a full army, but here come the Vipers. The Mining Cloud and the, the Burrow Speed Lurkers. Cyril just bashing through the front. He's got the tech. He's got the support. The Mining Clouds come through. GG. Cyril takes it. Game number one, pretty convincingly. It looked close for a lot of the game, but Cyril leaned on that tech about as hard as he can. And and without a second to breathe, we're going in a red shift. Which, in ZVZ, we've seen some very creative, very creative... Um... I guess we'll call them builds. Now, creep works both ways. I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to preface that. I've already, we've already seen the giraffe migration, but I'd love to see it again. You just bring the spot. I don't know. I haven't seen these matches. I don't want to seem like I'm spoiling it. Hold on to me and I'll set you free. If only I could. I'll turn up the sound. The game is so epic, it takes a second to load. I swear it's not Owl City, okay? Believe me. Game number two. How dramatic. Oh my god. The finisher taking game number one. But by no means, well, convincingly, but not to the extent, it wasn't a stop. It wasn't like suddenly Cyril, well, actually, when I describe it like that, it wasn't like Cyril's winning this whole game. He made a series of really smart uh, and incredibly well-timed moves, and, and Scarlet just got caught out. But on Redshift, your memes are no longer dreams. Any build you thought was too dumb or too silly, or or too ridiculous to ever work on the ladder, let alone in a tournament. Well, 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 break out. Just blow the dust off and break out that box of builds. Both players going for the gold base. Remember, one of the big vulnerabilities of taking the gold on Redshift is, well, well, melee units can't run by. The minerals form a wall. And uh, things like Zerglings and Banelings can't get through. Ranged attacks and anything that has more than a couple range will be able to shoot over the top. So in many Redshift games, no matter the matchup, we've seen that factor in. And both these players just right off the bat were taking the gold on the inside. And I gotta say, I'll take this time again. The map... There's been a series of maps in StarCraft like, why don't we try to do something new and weird? Like, uh, Olrena with this tiny pathway. Um, or Battle on the Boardwalk oh, with the tiny pathway, now but worse. What's the difference between a oh hippo and a zippo? One's really heavy, the other's a little lighter. Uh, but Redshift has kind of defied expectation. You see a map with these gold bases, this ridiculously short distance, the ability to shoot over. You think it's going to be entirely and just ridiculously cheesy. And while it is, it seems to have withstood uh, the professional test and, and been an incredibly entertaining map and, and doesn't actually get vetoed. A lot of those other maps w would get vetoed, like Darkness Sanctuary, a four-player map, is a very common veto, especially in smaller series. But Redshift doesn't get that treatment. 
I mean, for better or for worse, but uh, that means players are like, you know what? I'm ready for this. Scarlet gonna build a spine crawler on the opposite edge of her creek. Now, spine crawlers can move. They cannot attack while moving, but once they burrow on creep, wherever that creep may be, well, I mean, Cyril sees it though. This is right under. This is right under an overlord. He's making a lair. Looks like he wants to just rush, rush plus one speed roaches. Is this really just a giraffe migration? Scarlet is making. I, I mean, Zergling speed's on the way. Banelings as well. Wait, wait, wait. Now does that the the migration begins? I mean, Cyril just not opting for Zergling speed means he doesn't have a great response. Are those Banelings going to be able to blow up the spine? It doesn't matter. Cyril just cancels. So Scarlet moves the spine a little bit closer. The Banelings, they can get close enough for the manual detonation. Oh, a couple on the left. Oh, I'm going for the big hits. You get the, the splash damage goes over the minerals. So this gives away the Roach Warren. Okay, three drones go down. Cyril's still at 23. The attack in the main. The Zerglings trying to dart by, but there are plenty of roaches out from Cyril. Speed and plus one are on the way. Some of the Lings trying to run by. One roach isn't going to stop this. More Lings on the way down. The Queen should be able to get taken out. A little bit of drone micro, but not nearly enough. The roaches are caught in an awkward position. Cyril just picking Cyril. I mean, Scarlet picking Cyril apart. 10, 11 drones. 15 drones! The drones were fighting. Cyril just falling apart completely. In... The same way as last game, but much more dramatically and much more quickly. Scarlet, just two-pronged attack. The lings, the spine, a couple bane lings, and suddenly Cyril going back and forth and defending nothing. Three, what? Three drones? What? So Cyril just kind of has to attack. He's going to have plus one in road speed. But he's got 12 roaches, and that's about it. He's trying to make another drone. That's so sad. And the legs slip through! And they can fight as well. There is a transfuse here. But Scarlet should be able to put together enough lings to eat, fight. Eat. I know they have plus one. They have speed, but they're not going to win this war of attrition. 18 more lings on the way. Oh, actually going to fight on the ramp. She's that confident in the numbers coming up. The queen's at the back. A little bit of an attempt to make a Ravager to regenerate that roach, but even with plus one, these roaches are going to be clawed to pieces, and just like that, Scarlet going to tie things up. Wow, Cyril just fell apart there. Like, that, that spine crawler seemed to catch him by surprise. And it wasn't even that big of a commitment. I, Scarlet could have easily been like, well, guess what? Now I'm going for macro. But Cyril didn't quite set, set himself up to defend. And then... Okay. The next map is going to be Meme Catcher. And we're all tied up. Another, well, we've got Redshift out of the way now, and it, I don't think too many, uh, too many players are going to be too tilted by Redshift. I mean, now, Cyril, here's the difference, is Cyril doesn't have a habit of losing games, like, at all, even on Redshift. So, I mean, it's ZVZ, it's Scarlet. Who can be a ZVZ specialist? But still, does I, well losing a single game is not going to tilt Sarah. But it, it's fun to dream, right? Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. all right. Will we see? That wasn't. That was still a hatch gas. Well, that was still a hatch first out of both players, even on red shift. 
and it looks like that's going to be... There, there's a lot of kind of rock, paper, scissors. It's a soft version of rock, paper, scissors. It's like, like, I don't know, rock made out of rubber, safety scissors, and then just paper, because paper is not that threatening in the first place, where even if it's like a 12-pull drone pull against a hatch first, which isn't out of the question, uh, you can still, with good micro defend, it's not an automatic loss, you're just in an awkward spot. But, for example, if, if let's say Scarlet went for the 12-pull drone pull into Spines, if Cyril had just gone for like a 16-pull, like a very safe pull, that's nearly a hard counter, still a potential to lose, but... Uh, they're pretty much the safe if you are confident in ZVZ then you can get away with a hatch first most of the time even against very committed all ins uh, in fact if a player does very committed all ins they're stuck doing that is the simple version both these players incredibly competent I don't want to risk just kind of losing a game to a player who's prepared to defend yeah. I've spent too much talking abstractly let's talk literally Sarah with a little bit of a later hatch. I don't know if Scarlet was uh, just trying to get her out. I, that, we're maybe a little bit too much into the details there, but when do they stop droning? Are, are both of them? Scarlet's still mining with three in gas. Sarah as well. Because, wait, neither of them started Zergling speed? Are we skipping Zergling speed on both sides? Is this plus one roach rush on both sides. Plus one speed roach. There's a lair. Um, and evolution chamber on either side, but... And a lair. Okay. Uh, wow. The ultimate game of chicken. Nobody getting zergling speed. Now we're on a ramp with where you can wall off with the creep from your hatch. That's the important detail. On some maps, the, the natural is larger, and sometimes you don't even have a ramp at all. Um, but on this map, the ramp is near enough, to, and that layer going to be given away. Big information for Cyril, by the way. Uh, Scarlet did not make any lings, I believe. Yeah, she made zero, whereas Cyril made two. And, of course, both players understand the meta or whatever on this map, as you would call it. Um, the series or, or the, the range of builds that players can and usually use. But I'm surprised to see them both committing to it uh, at the same time. So how does this play out is the question. Well, Scarlet's going plus one melee. This is going to be a spire. Wait. Uh, I was like, Burrow? Okay, what? <laughs> Not Burrow. This should be a spire out of Scarlet as uh, nothing else justifies how much gas. Yeah, yeah. So... Now we can get into the mind games, like, she, she knows that Cyril saw the lair timing and the evolution chamber, and both of which looked very much like they could be a roach timing. So, is she expecting Cyril to react to that by doing his own roach timing and playing defensive, uh, or is it an extra mind game that because it's so obvious that she wouldn't do that after he scouted it, she's just going to do it anyways? Or was the plan all along, Spire? We may never know. But Zergling Speed is on the way, plus one. Now, Mutas are a very momentum-based unit. If the Mutas come out and you're not ready for them, then it looks like the Overseer will be able to come in and also intentionally avoiding the third base, but every second counts right now for Cyril. If he doesn't get, like... These rocks are already being taken down. That's a few more seconds that roaches will take to get across the map. Every second that this spire goes unscouted makes it more difficult for Cyril to respond to mutalisks. The spire is going to be done. And if it's done, he can't know how close to done the mutas are. I mean, he might be able to catch some popping out, but since the spire just finished, he that spire could have been done for 20, 30 seconds now. The mutas could already be coming across the map if he wasn't watching too carefully. So now what? You can't just go mute as yourself. Doesn't work like that. Scarlet getting in. Gonna get on top of the spore. What is the response here from Cyril? Do you go Hydras and try to match tit for tat? Because Hydras, if you haven't preemptively gone Hydras, if you didn't see the Spire beforehand, 
the other option, it looks like Cyril is taking, is going into Queens and maybe getting an infestation pit for infestors and potentially up to Hive for Parasitic Bomb on the Vipers if you really need to, but honestly, Hydras are a unit, like, eventually the Mutos get so much momentum and map control that Hydras just don't stack up. If you can get them preemptively, we do have Hydras on the way, but, but Scarlet has a lot of momentum right now because there's no way for Cyril to move out. There's almost perfect vision. Scarlet going to be able to see a lot of the map between the links and obviously the mutas being up in your grill the whole time how did i okay how did i break oh i think i know Wait, that's the wrong one no i broke the production tab again you know you think i would learn this by now but uh all this drama you know oh i figured it out i'm a professional all right A lurker down on the way. So, Cyril, it looks like he's just going to try to turtle up. And with this, you want to get as close as you can to maxing out. Get enough lurkers to rip through banes before they can get close. Scarlet just build Mutus. She's committing to it. And ever since Fungal no longer stuns units, uh, it can't just chain Fungal. The Mutas won't die to a series of Fungals. I mean, this gets a little bit harder to pull off. Scarlet just getting a lot of damage done. Darting in. Yeah, the links are scouted out. I love this Terra music in the ZVZ. Enough queens to keep the mutas busy. You don't want to be losing mutas. That's a lot of momentum. Every, every muta that falls hurts because queens and hydras are cheaper. But it, it looks like Scarlet not going to let Cyril put together his army just gonna dive on this right now picking off some hydras you can't make lurkers without any hydra Cyril okay he has six hydras I was like no hydras and a lurker done finishing oh my god but the lurker done is not done yet here comes Scarlet 150 to 132 supply the queens in the very front but the lings get on top of them incredibly quickly the main lings rolling through right into the hydra list without them there's no anti-air aside from spores the bases are going to be cut off from one another. The links can get on top of almost everything. The spore crawler targeted down. The links trying, well, the bane links trying to roll through. Where's the anti air? This is what happens. You just drive a wedge in between the bases and you open it up until they have no chance of moving units in between. And Scarlet going to be on match point versus the best non Korean player, or, or so people say. What 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 a song. To... Can, can we get something more dramatic? No. 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 Alright. We don't have too much in common. Except we puff that marijuana. My head spinning like tie dye. I'm spaced out like a sci fi. That good connection like Wi Fi. Going to game four, which is on what? Darkness Sanctuary. Who picked this one? Okay, well, we got to think about the lesser evils. Uh, there was a veto on 16 bit. There was a veto on 16 bit. And there was a veto on 16 bit is a huge map I'm, i it kind of requires an entirely different style of zvz it's like a much larger dream catcher and that you can wall off and deny information but I, I i would imagine now i don't know which player vetoed it but i kind of imagine Cyril vetoing it to just not to deny as much information as possible but now that i think about it someone picked darkness sanctuary so at this point my logic goes all the way out the window that leaves one other map that was vetoed which is my brain's not working there's one other map in the pool that i'm completely blanking on 
Lost and found, yes, lost and found. Yeah, I'm honestly, like, I'm not going to pretend to have any logic on those vetoes. I don't know why. I'd like to hear the... Maybe it's like, well, we just picked one at random. But anyways, we're loading in a darkness sanctuary. Come out of this silliness. With Scarlet. On match point! But in the bottom left, facing elimination far sooner than he would usually expect. Wait, I just moved to the other side. It's Cyril. And in the top right, Scarlet. And we're in cross positions of Darkness Sanctuary. This is where, like, you... This is, this is where we demonstrate why so many StarCraft players historically have either in the past or after their careers or even during are incredible poker players. In fact, there's several former uh, StarCraft players that are professional poker players because a lot of StarCraft, and we see it demonstrated on four-player maps, is about, well, bluffing, calculated risk, trying to read your opponent, um, seeing what kind of hand you're dealt and trying to figure out what hand your opponent has. And when you're on Darkness Sanctuary and cross positions, you're going to have nothing to work off of except instinct here. It's going to be, once again, a hatch first, a hatch gas pool. The default build, essentially, on either side. They're both sending their overlord, first overlord, wait, wait, take that back. The first Overlord being sent towards the Nat of each player. <gasps> wow, 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 wow. Okay. So Scarlet, I don't know if that was intentional, but pulling back the OV, maybe trying to get... Uh, no, that, that, that was probably an accident, actually. But we're looking for the Natural here. Both players sending to the closest Natural they can get to with their OVs to get maybe some quick information. Now, both players going to be scouting. Okay, my opponent is not there. And once they start, the overlords start intersecting on their paths, they'll realize they're in cross positions, still having no information on exactly what the opponent is doing. But once they see the overlord timings, they should be able to ascertain that this is at least not a pool first, like super cheese. Um, because otherwise, the overlords wouldn't be showing themselves to one another at the identical times, because one player would have had to deny their, uh, to delay their overlord in order to get that pool. I hope that all made sense. I feel like that was just one run-on sentence. But we'll see how it plays out. Plus one carapace on the way. For Cyril. Now this is a great build to kind of dupe your opponent. If Scarlet doesn't get a scout in, like, it, it's nearly impossible to see this beforehand. Scarlet can scout for third bases. She can get a baneling nest, like these are all the default. But this is one of those builds. There's is that Oh my god. It's one. And this creep tumor I feel is a little bit to mislead Scarlet. Like And I know it sounds like a whole deal, but showing that you're spreading creep at all like this can be very like, okay, are you are you not getting gas yet? It is what it might look like. Oh, yes. Okay, I, what I think Cyril is trying to do. He's trying to show, okay, I'm building queens. Um, I don't have zergling speed yet. I don't have that many lings. I'm getting a creep tumor. So I'm going to be reliant on... I, I probably went gasless early on. But what he's really doing is getting plus one carapace, sneaking a bunch of lings behind. And the creep spread is essentially uh, a bluff. Right now, Cyril is bluffing, and Scarlet trying to call it. But he's got 16 more lings on the way. And, and the benefit to plus one carapace, aside from being better in a straight-up fight, that means a Zergling survives a Baneling hit. Which is a huge deal when it comes to the early ling Bane fights, when suddenly a single Zergling can prevent... Uh, well, can detonate two Banelings for the cost. That's, that's about as cheap as it gets. And now Scarlet going to see the speed finishing, see the plus one. Cyril behind this. Scarlet went up to 50 drones. That is... 
Well, this is not good. Two banelings, not enough to stop this. That's a lot of zerglings streaming across the map. 22. No more, well, not that many more on the way, but this will probably be at least the third base going down. Sarah with a nice follow-up behind this. Plus one ranged attack, and he's already got the carapace, which helps out the roaches as well. Plus one ranged attack and a lair. Stella has already finished her lair and gone for the spire. Now, if she can get there without losing the third, well, that's the big if. Are there more banelings? Only two banelings is really greedy, but obviously you don't want to be making too many banelings and using your gas before a spire finishes, but it's also incredibly risky to underestimate this attack. There's still a lot of lings on the field. 32 to 32, but with plus one carapace, Cyril's lings are significantly better. And he's, he's forcing Scarlet into unit production. Now she's about to drown. She loves her drowns. Okay. A handful of Zerglings slipping by. It's really difficult to get vision like you would on the other maps, too. You can get vision around your bases, but every single counterattack path, well, this one should be covered. A handful of Lings splitting off. Scarlet with great deflections thus far. And detonating some of the, well, Cyril detonating some of the Banes. A single Zergling gets in. This is a huge scout. Did Scarlet see? Oh, wait, I take it all back. Scarlet did not see whether there was a second gas or the roach warren. Not that it would necessarily matter that much, but uh, the roaches are about to come across. Mutas are on the way, but they're not done yet. So a lot of things streaming in. Gotta keep the banelings alive. When the roaches get here, that's gonna be harder. The mutas should be going straight, making a beeline for the roaches. Need to start chipping into them. They don't do much damage. Roaches are armored. Well, they do have armor as well. That's going to take some time, especially with the plus one carapace done. That kind of negates some of the muta bounces. Kind of one of the ravages. If Scarlet survives, 63 drones to 44. That's a pretty comfortable position. Cyril continuing to stream forward. Scarlet going to use some of the Banes on the Roaches. Not going to kill them, but they're going to soften them up pretty drastically. Still just rallying Roaches across. Sarah with a huge amount of supply. Some Spine Crawlers finishing up. Nine drones have died thus far. Some of the Zerglings were able to slip through. Another set of Spines at the back. The drones are transferring into the brunt of Sarah's units. The drone count dipping. A dozen and more so far. More Roaches coming in. There's not too much on the ground. The Lynx taking some of the hits. The roaches are forced. Well, the roaches are working their way around to the net. The drones are running around trying to find some freedom. The mutas weren't out quite in time to stem the tide of these roaches as it rolls into the main. More drones are coming off the line. 28, 29. Well, I, wait, I preempted myself. 29 have gone down thus far. It didn't look like this should do so much damage, but Cyril gets in at the last possible second. If this had been 10 seconds later, okay, 10 seconds later, then Scarlet should have held this with... Maybe 10 or 12 drones lost. But we're reaching critical numbers here. There are some queens on the way at home. Cyril is building additional anti-air. And, and when Scarlet's running her drones all around, she's got a grand total of zero gas income. That's not very much. And a ling slipped into the main. A Nidus network is on the way. The follow-up is there. Because even with this, when you have this many mutas... And even with Lings on the field, with double-digit mutas, you need to keep the momentum up as a player who doesn't have really direct anti-air. And by not really direct anti-air, oh no. And Burrow from Cyril. What a choice. There's no vision of this. Cyril making something out of almost nothing. Killing so many drones. Scarlet trying to recover, thinking she's all right for now. But the queens pop out into the main. Not that many queens. That opens up an opportunity. The third base is just going to be given up. The Knight has created too much space. There's not that many units on the ground. Only a dozen Zerglings. A handful of Banelings. The Transfuses are doing so much. Keeping the queens alive. And that's enough. Cyril going to grind through with just enough units. So close. Oh. Just a few more seconds on the Spire. Maybe a, a few more Lings or Spire. Oh. That was so close. Like, if the Nidus had been scouted, then maybe if you can pop one Nidus, get the momentum back with the Mutus. That was really close. Like, it's it's hard to... 
And I, it didn't feel like Cyril should do that much damage, but the way he was splitting his lings off. The final mount, one way or another, will be Catalyst. Final match of this WCS Circuit Showdown. The finisher in the bottom right, Sarah. And Scarlet, the Queen of Blades. She's. Scarlet definitely more uh, like. Um, she She's a bit of a roller coaster. Always looking amazing, maybe for a tournament or for a qualifier, but then the next time a, a different Scarlet shows up. Whereas Cyril has, it, it just seems like the strong gets stronger. But here, he's bleeding. He's bleeding. It's two to two. It's still one or two Zerglings potentially from elimination. Scarlet bringing him to the edge. And again, every single game this series has been a hatch first for both sides, if I'm not mistaken. Which I, I think is a sign both of mutual respect and a real... Well, I'm going to stop at mutual respect because what that essentially means is, is neither player wants to take the risk that the other one is going to have good enough control to defend any sort of early pressure or early all-in. And if you go for a pull first, if you play safe, Oh my god. If you play safe in ZVZ and you go for a pool first defensively, if someone goes hatch first, they're just going to have a big economic advantage. They're going to have their larva quicker, more queens quicker. It, it just gives them more more area to mine from. And little tiny edges in a mirror matchup can, can cut right through you later on. So right now, both these players with a lot of mutual respect and looking for any of those tiny edges. Yes, is pulled off by Scarlet. Cyril not quite at that zergling speed yet, but pulls off a gas as well. So this will be a quick third on both sides. Now that we're on game five, it seems like we're breaking, both sides are breaking out the cookie cutter ZVZ build. The hatch gas pull into zergling speed, pull off a gas, get a third, do a tiny bit of ling pressure, uh, and then work your way back into gas to get a mainling nest Will we dance is the question. Will either player, because this is sometimes what you'll usually see at, at below the very top tier in ZVZ. My level. Well, I'm a little bit lower than that. But is uh, one or both players will make a big round of Zerglings at like 27 or 28 drones and see, well, are you going to die to Ling Bane or not? And then the other player has to make Ling Bane and then we just go into that whole battle. But at the highest level, at, at this caliber of play, players will sometimes just skip it. They'll only make maybe six, eight lanes. And then that's just enough to keep you honest, but not enough to actually commit to any sort of meaningful attack. But in this case, that isn't true. Scarlet making over a dozen lanes. This is a pressure. If Cyril doesn't respond uh, strongly to this, he runs the risk of losing his third. And now this is also behind this Scarlet is making drones. One, she wants to put pressure on Cyril. And two, ideally he overreacts. This is not supposed to kill Cyril. This is probably not even supposed to kill the third. But the idea here is to force Cyril into making units. If you can cancel the third, great. There's no Banelings here from Scarlet. Oh, such a dangerous game. It's hard to tell exactly how many Zerglings make a Baneling worth it. Oh my god, the slip and slide. But a manual detonation in the center mass of Scarlet's Langs. I don't... I don't feel like... 
and that's what I mean it is sometimes like at the highest caliber players just aren't gonna make mistakes they're not gonna let banelings detonate on one or two lings so did Scarlet get enough damage done I, I don't think so that main detonates on three lings which isn't the end of the world and now Cyril has 40 drones to 30 of Scarlet Zergling slipping through, kind of looking for the drone count, seeing the roaches. He might have gotten a beat on the fact that roach speed has not started, not that that was a likelihood. But in this game, Cyril looking like his dominant self. Up 10 workers. I, I didn't even realize Scarlet skipped the Baneling Nest. One to put this pressure on and probably to conserve gas as well. I, di I didn't notice that before, but that's a, a pretty key part. If she had one or two Banes... With that pressure, maybe something different happens. But it looks like this is going to be a follow-up all-in. Now, was this planned? Or is this a reaction to the amount of damage he was able to do? Uh, or not able to do, rather. Gets a Banelin. Well, this is it. This is Scarlet taking her shot. If Cyril holds this, and he holds it strongly without losing... I think he can even lose the third. This is so all-in. But it's 16 roaches for Cyril to just 12 of Scarlet. The Banelings are going to have to break through... But Cyril has Banelings of his own. The army supply in favor of Cyril, but some of that's in the mail right now. A handful of Banelings are trickling through. Cyril looking for some good connections. Still some Lings in the back, but Scarlet's units are thinning out. There's one more Bane coming up to the front. Cyril deflecting this with strength. And getting a wrap around on the Roaches, closing the distance, ripping them apart. The supply tells the story, 57 to 88. Oh, that was, uh... That's not good. Scarlet, I mean, this, nothing has gone right this game, to be honest. Um... The, this is... Me the other games were very close, uh, one way or the other, on the edge of a knife. This game rests on the uh, middle of a table for Cyril. It would be quite hard to knock it off. Scarlet might be able to defend with some nice Bane hits. Almost a nice one there, but Cyril gets the targeting at the last second. A couple more Banes on the way up, but getting a wrap around here. I mean, Scarlet holds. She's got 29 drones. I wish, I wish it was closer. I really do. But there's no lair. There's no plus one. Cyril has more drones. I mean, uh, maybe a count if a counterattack gets in and kills a mineral line. Not not Scarlet's mineral line. Oh, ho, ho, the Banelings. But is able to split off. There's no there's no roaches on the way. Ah. Uh, Scarlet droned up hard. Cyril coming in again with another round of units. The, the third base is exposed, but... Well, well, Cyril, I didn't even realize this. Didn't have a lair. Okay. So... I... This is another one of those... Like, you get a lead in CVZ. Okay, there we go. I was wondering, like, the supply getting pretty close to even. Then Cyril decides he's going to make units. 24 roaches on the way and, and a big upgrade plus one. It looks like Scarlet just going to try to go into mutas. Uh, as if you're not going to go for plus one with roaches is almost kind of um, admitting defeat in a roach battle. Because you're going to have to have overwhelming numbers to get even close to beating any number of roaches of your opponent. Scarlet making a bunch of drones. Her only real hope right now 
is to get a huge economy and remain unpunished. A Vainling connects on some Zerglings, finally! Roach speed is on the way. The Epo Chamber starts. Oh. And Cyril getting a constant scout that there's no plus one attack on the Roaches of Scarlet. Which means he's going to have the plus two advantage. Here comes Cyril. Roach speed on the way. 42 Roaches to 15. 42 oftentimes a greater number than 15. Taking a fourth base. It looks like Cyril's. It's time to bring the finisher. Finishing this game. I, I, a few. I mean, if, if Cyril stacks up all his roaches into a concave and get hit by corrosive bile, then Scarlet might have a dream. But now road speed is done. Plus one oh, ranged attack now I have your just attention. started. 195 to 137 supply. The corrosive biles. One will connect. 43 to 15 roaches. I think that that tells most of the story here. GG. Cyril manages just barely by one match. To move on in WCS Valencia, but Scarlet bringing him about as close as anyone ever has. Honestly, uh, the Darkness Sanctuary game I think was it looked a lot worse than it was for Scarlet. I guess is the, is the way to put it. But I think that game could have definitely gone the other way. Um, a pretty messy series, to be honest, between all the matches, but. A lot of respect for both players, from both players as well. Just that last match, uh, compared to the rest of the series, definitely a bit more underwhelming, but a great series overall. A lot of uh, uh, surprising split as Zerg versus Zerg goes for both players just kind of starting out so standard. So, GG, Cyril takes it, 3-2. to two.